Hey y'all, it's Michelle here, and today we are going to do some baby DIY. The baby's asleep, mommy has her coffee, so let's get started. Mommy is going to make some DIY grippy socks. And you can make these pretty easily, so what you're going to need, sorry I'm getting a birth cold. Um, what you're going to need for this project is puppy paint, um, or 3D paint, any fabric paint that's like dimensional. Um, you especially want it to be 3D paint because without that, it's not going to have that um, dimension to grab. So, uh, you need some socks, whatever size that you need. I went with some um, primary colors, they work great, coordinate with everything, good to go. A pair of scissors, some tape if you need it, uh, wax paper, roughly about, about this size, and this is generous, you could probably cut it down even smaller. And then you're going to need some cardboard, which I actually used the packaging for the socks, and it worked out really well. If you want to try to do more than a couple at a time, you might want to get some extra cardboard, or you can probably just fold up some wax paper and use that as well. But I like using the cardboard to give it a little bit of stiffness while I'm working on it. So to start off, I cut up the packaging into little shapes roughly around the size of the sock width so that it would stretch the sock a little bit but not horribly much and then it would just give me a nice flat surface to work on. Uh, and what I did was this is the other half. I just kind of cut it where the indentations are and then just cut it in a straight line. this like, shape here and then I just cut this at an angle point and now I have two pieces that are roughly the same width and roughly the same length and then you also have this extra little triangle piece for like scraps and I just pulled off some wax paper so, you know whatever size you want cut it in half either either direction doesn't really make much of a difference and then <clears throat> I just take the wax paper fold it over the top a little bit and then fold it around the back so that you just kind of have this little shape you don't need any tape but you can tape it if you want um, you just set that aside I also get the socks in the right direction, you need to pull the seams apart so that they kind of are resembling the shape that they would be on the foot like this. And then you just glide that right on in. I like to have like a nice flat side, that's what I'm working on, and then you get the little pieces going down. Just glide that right on in there. You want to kind of push it to the end, and then this is also a good time to make sure that you're kind of lined up on the toe seam, so you'll have this really nice, smooth surface to work with. Now you want to make sure you use the wax paper because otherwise uh, the paint, paint could go through and actually stick to the cardboard, and that's a huge mess. So the wax paper helps with releasing that. Now, these socks are really are super handy for when your toddler or baby is starting to really walk good, but they're not really like sure about their footing. Um, I know my daughter slips all the time, and um, she loses her footing even though she's been walking for a few months because she decides that she wants to run, so now we have one, one pair ready. Now we're going to work on the next pair. I will probably do... Let's do the blue pair next, because it's a cute color that I've got coordinated for that. And it, you know, it may help if you want to get all your socks ready first, putting them up and getting them in the right direction. Um, however you want to do it early, that's fine. Sorry if I'm not horribly loud, like I said, I have a cold, and I'm trying not to wake up the baby because she has a cold, hooray! 
everybody's miserable in my house. This is short answer. But um, I like to take my daughter to a indoor playground, which is a socks only facility, so they can only wear socks, they can't wear shoes, and they can't be barefoot. The problem with that is, is that most of the areas where they play have um, like rubber mats, which are really nice, but then they have a small area where there's just like tables for sitting and eating, and it's just like linoleum over there. So when she's in just regular socks, she gets running over there and she starts sliding, and she's going to end up losing her balance. But uh, you can't really find grippy socks anywhere. Not at least like with the whole foot covered. Um, so I just got, this is a 10 pack of like Granimal socks from Walmart. I think I paid like $4 for them, $5 maybe. Um, you could probably even get socks from the Dollar Tree. Uh, dark colors are always recommended because they're gonna get dirty. <laughs> Plug break. Okay. Um, I would recommend anytime you do any kind of crafting, to get some wax paper, cover your surface, because messes happen, dogs bump into you, and then this also gives you a good place to like make sure that your paint is nice. So I think for the white, I think the blue pair, I'm going to do some coordinating colors, like the blue orange. I think with a white pair, I'm going to do this light pair with the blue. Um, I'm just going to do these two pairs since I only have two pieces of cardboard and I don't feel like going and getting more. You could probably use construction paper. Um, that might work. And it, like this stuff is great forever because I, I've had this in the garage where it gets hot and it still works great. So. Um, you just want to kind of get it get it going first so you don't end up with like a huge blob like I did on the last one. And then you just want to start making lines and you don't you don't need to do anything like really fancy pattern wise. Um, you can do lines, you can do dots. I am however going to make them closer together than I did on the last pair because I feel like you can get more air coverage that way if you make them a little closer together. Um, I don't think though that, I think you should cover the whole foot, is what I was trying to say, because you want to maximize your coverage area, because let's be honest, they're still probably going to slide a little bit, because the socks themselves are going to slide around on their feet. So you're just trying to maximize the amount of grip, so I think having them as close, as much covered as possible is the best, and that what I do is I kind of... Once I get to the end of the foot, I'm just going to try to straighten out the heel a little bit, which can be challenging because it buckles naturally. Um, just do the best you can. It doesn't need to be perfect. I guess those are just socks. Uh, this is our first pair, for sock. So, yeah, you have them a good amount close together. And just straight lines, you know. You, I mean, if you want to get real fancy with it, you could do waves. Um, the key is just try to keep it straight, which is why I use the cardboard underneath, because if the, if the sock buckles together while it's drying, it's going to end up sticking together. And then when this sock gets stretched out, it's going to pull apart. Um, sometimes I like to just put a small little toe strip right at the end where I get to the beginning of my cardboard. So I've got that extra wax paper at the end, so I mean, it's probably going to be fine, to be honest. The, the big thing with this is I would let these dry for a good 24 hours before you use them. You just want to make sure that they're, they're really dry before you put them on, take the wax paper off, any of that. This stuff doesn't take that long to dry though, to be honest, so it's, it's not that bad. I am by no means making these uniform. Uh, 
straight. I'm just trying to get them as close together as possible. And then I'm just gonna put like one little one on the ridge here. Okay, one done. Cap the blue. Get my orange going. I'm actually thinking I might wanna make some little small lines in the red on these black pair just because like I feel like they might be too, a little bit too far apart. This one's old. It's still good. Just gonna get it going a little bit. There we go. I hate wasting paint, so I never throw this stuff away, <laughs> which is probably bad. All right, let's get some cute blue and orange going here. This is definitely a little harder to squeeze because it's getting old. It's probably time to throw this one away and get a fresh orange. So where do you get puffy paint? Well. Uh, you can honestly get this from anywhere, just about. Um, these are going to be slanted a little bit because I'm not looking up straight, apparently. Uh, Walmart has this puffy paint, Hobby Lobby, Joann's, Target, um, really like any store probably that's going to have craft supplies as far as like paint, um, especially if they have like a, a fabric decorating section because this is tough like fabric paint um, they're gonna have this stuff and it's usually pretty cheap I think. these this also works really great on shoes as well um, I've noticed that some of these slippers from Walmart tend to not have very good grips on them even like at my pediatrician's office, some of the little sandals, even with the ridges on the soles, they still don't really grip very well. So I've actually done this on her shoes. I do this on her house slippers, especially, because they're real slick on the bottom. And um, it's, I've noticed a huge difference. And you can wash this once it's good and dry. I would give it at least a couple days before you actually put it through the wash. You can dry it, um, or you can just, you know, if it seems like it's picked up a lot of dirt, you can just wipe it off with a wipey, wet, wet washcloth, whatever, whatever you got, and clean them off. So here we go. We got our blue and orange, court, nice coordinating colors there, and our white and our little blue, or light blue, or whatever. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And I'll let these, um, I'll let these sit and dry. These are gonna be really great. So just give you an idea little foots in there. I mean it's it stretches really well. It doesn't it doesn't break. It probably will over time, but I mean this wasn't the permanent solution. This is just to help help with the grip so that she can play. And this dark pair is gonna be perfect because it's gonna get filthy and you'll never know. Um, but yeah I put I put them on her shoes too. Put them on her house slippers and I've noticed a huge difference. You can actually hear the paint gripping the floor. It hasn't fallen off. And it's uh, a great way to make sure that your baby is safe. So this is our craft for today. Uh, let me know if you try it out, how it worked out for you. Did it help your baby with walking, learning to walk, um, keeping their little toesies warm in the winter? But um, yeah. So thank you for coming and watching. And I'm looking forward to making more videos. Um, I have got a bunch of content lined up now that hopefully the house is on the mend from this cold. Uh, um, got some product reviews we're going to be doing, some more uh, baby DIY, some mom hacks, I've got some newborn must-haves, baby must-haves, uh, a lot of, a lot of useful information, and I know, like, as first-time moms, um, experience is golden, so, uh, I think we'll close out from there, and as my closer, I'd like to be the uplifting mom today, because I think it's important for us to encourage each other instead of bringing each other down because being a mom is hard enough so we don't need that we don't need that kind of drama and this goes for moms and dads. if no one else has told you this today you are doing an excellent job as a parent and you know what you are enough you're enough you don't need to be anything more than you are you are doing an excellent job thanks for stopping by and i'll see y'all later